Isaiah 54, verse number number one. Amen. Amen. Are you, if you bring that up, we're going to read uh, the very first two or three verses. Amen. Let's go. Everybody want to go. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Verse 2. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitation. Spare not, lengthen thy curves, and strengthen thy stakes. Number three. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Verse 2, please. I go back there. So we have considered everything. We have two more things to consider. Number one is lengthen thy cords, and number two is what? Strengthen thy stakes. So lengthen thy cords equal to bigger. Are you following me? Strengthen thy stakes equal to what? Stronger. Are you here? Yes, sir. Imagine every door that God has opened for you from January to June. Imagine it becoming bigger from July to December. This friend, are you still with me? Yes, sir. And then imagine every grace that God has put upon your life from January to June. Imagine God doing what? Strengthening it and making it even what? Stronger. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. This is your habitation. Mm. This is your inheritance. Mm. Amen. Amen. How many people heard the testimonies mm. of how they keyed into the word double portion mm. and they saw that happen in their lives? Amen. Amen. Are you still with me? It is what you believe in, excuse me, that you will attract. Amen. 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 If your heart refuses it and does not believe it, your life will not attract it. But if your heart believes it, your life will attract it. Help me, Jesus. Are you all still here with me? Yes, sir. So this year, we're going bigger and we're going stronger. Day spring, as a church, we're going what? Bigger. And we're going how? Stronger. Your marriage is going what? Bigger and going how? Stronger. Your job is going where? Bigger and how? Stronger. Our place is going what? Bigger and going where? Stronger. Sam Spring is going what? Bigger and going where? Stronger. Amen. Amen. Sam Spring, your leader did not let me go. <laughs> she called me back. Amen. Amen. Are you all still with me? Yes, sir. Yes. Bigger and stronger. Bigger and stronger. Imagine every testimony you've given. God is going to make it bigger and make it what? Amen. Stronger in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please, get ready for this. Get ready for this. Get ready for this. Open your heart. Open your heart. We went on evangelism, isn't it? And then for the rest half of this year, it's going to be what? Bigger and what? Stronger. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You fought battles and you won. Hallelujah. God will make you have how many kind of victories? What type of victories? Bigger victories. And for that warfare, God will make you stronger for it. Does that make sense to somebody? Yes, Someone say, I receive it. Yes, Someone say, I receive it. Yes, In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to concentrate on this today. And we'll take Holy Communion based on this. Amen. Amen. And we're going to enter into a new season in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Enter into a new season. Imagining a door opening unto you and you stepping into it in Jesus' name. Amen. He that believeth, you will say it. You know? The scripture our sister read today, I want you to go home and put that scripture, read it again and again. Isaiah chapter 62. Amen. Amen. We are going to be visiting that scripture a lot for the rest half of this year. Amen. Amen. This is how we operate in the house. It's the word. Amen. Amen. We stand on the word, we move with the word, and we see it operate in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for making this happen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Now, now, let's look at this. Father, we thank you because as we go into the word, great things will happen. Amen. Amen. I just, I'm just receiving uh, a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. God says, do not be afraid of stepping, stepping out and stepping forward. Amen. I don't know who this is for. Do not be afraid. There are two things coming to my heart. The first one is do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. There are certain things that will come up and stand against you. But do not be afraid. The Red Sea came against the children of Israel. But God told them, tell the people that they do what? Go forward. And this year, 2023, we are telling ourselves in this house, go forward. So I'm telling you, do not be afraid. 
Situations may look dark and dim and difficult and painful. But God says, I should warn you ahead of time that fear is not an emotion you should carry with you. Are you still here with me? Fear is not permitted in your thinking. It's not permitted in your expectations. In the mighty name of Jesus, do not be afraid. Amen. Amen. Number two, God says focus. Amen. Amen. Some of us are too distracted by minute things. Focus. The reason why things are not moving is because God has not spoken. It's because you are doing too much. You are not focused on the things and the instructions that God is giving. Are you all with me? Yes, sir. It is critical in this season to focus. If your eye is single, what happens? Your whole body is full of light. A double-minded man is what? Unstable in all his ways. Not some. All. And such a man should not expect to receive anything from God. So God cannot give a double-minded man anything. Are you still here with me? Yes, sir. God wants to give. God wants to bless. But if you are double-minded, you cannot receive. If you are here, be here. Are you following me? Yes, sir. If you are in him, be in him. Praise God. If you are in the word, be in the word. Amen. Amen. You cannot be double-minded. Please hear this. And I'm saying it from the depth of my heart. You cannot be double-minded. You cannot be double-minded. You cannot hope in God with one mind and focus all your strength in something else. It will not work. You cannot say one thing with your mouth and live a different kind of life. It will not work. Are you with me? Yes, For it to work, you cannot be double-minded. This spring, are you here? Yes, sir. Is there an amen in the house? Amen. That's a good place to say amen. amen. I just heard the Lord say to say those two things. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord will help us. The Lord will help us. Okay. It says, lengthen thy cords, and then do what? Strengthen thy stakes. So to lengthen your cord means to add more length to the cord that puts the tent together, isn't it? Yes, and to strengthen that thing means to make it bigger, to increase it, to enlarge it, to make it longer. Because you're about to break forth, so you need to lengthen your cords. I went down to Sussex. I think it was the month of June, amen. At the beginning of the month of June, I went, no, it was the last day in the month of May, I think it was. I went down there, and they were having a program, and this program was being held in a, in a tent. It was a massive tent, amen. And uh, I was contemplating all these teachings in my heart as I went there. So I went, uh, during the break time, I went to investigate the tent. It was a Christian program. So I was looking at the tent, amen. This massive thing that had thousands of people inside was held together and held in place by these cords that they stretched and they put them in the ground and it was holding in place the tent everybody was gathered if those things loosen and they scatter the tent will come down on everybody are you with me and i was looking at the tent and there was wind serious wind these things were flapping in the wind but they were not shaking they were not they were not shaking the tent the tent was stable <laughs> But the cords were shaking. But because of how strong they were, the tent was not shaking. Are you following me? There are certain things that God will build in your life. And the only way he will make it happen is by lengthening the cords of your life. And I will explain what that means in a minute. To lengthen the cords is not just to look for more rope and tie. No. It's to make sure that where you are going, you have enough cords to hold you for where you are going. So the people who built that tent, they knew the length of the cords they needed before they actually built the tent. If we are building a small tent, we need a small cord. If we are building a big tent, we need a very long cord. Are you following me? So it is your dream of where you are going that determines the length of the cord you have. So also is the vision you have for your life for the next six months that will determine how this message impacts you. The cause of your life will come and be determined by the vision of what you have for your life for the next six months. This is just laying the foundation. Are you following me? Okay. Now, to lengthen the call means to come to a place where you can bring growth and increase into your life. Growth and increase. 
So to go bigger, you need to grow bigger. Did you hear me? Yes. To go bigger, you need to do what? Grow bigger. Bigger does not come by impartation. Bigger comes by growing. The activation of growing may come by impartation. The activation of different gifts that will cause you to grow may come by impartation. But to really be bigger in the realms of the spirit, you need to grow bigger to go bigger. Tell someone for me, you need to grow bigger to go bigger. Does that make sense to somebody? Yes. Sometimes we are waiting for some supernatural intervention to dictate to us how life will change. That is good. But there are some things that will happen naturally as you grow. Amen. And that will bring change into your life automatically. Isaiah chapter 10, please. Isaiah chapter 10. If you're in Isaiah chapter 10, let's go all the way to verse 27. Isaiah chapter number 10, verse number 27. Son, do you have that up there? All right, let's read it together. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of what? This ring, we need to, we need to get excited because of the word of God. Let's read it again, one to go. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of what? The anointing. Now I want to look at that word, the anointing. There are three dimensions of the word, the anointing. The first dimension of that word, the anointing, is the supernatural intervention of power by the Holy Spirit. Are you there with me? Number one. Supernatural intervention of power by the Holy Spirit. The anointing is the Holy Spirit coming on you, coming on me, and breaking things and destroying things. Are you following me? He comes on us and he takes away some burdens, takes away certain things. That's number one. And that's the one as a church we are used to. The church of the living God, all over the world, we are used to the anointing that comes and breaks yokes. And it just comes on us. The anointing comes, it flows in the house. The power of God is moving. Yokes are broken. You fall under the power. That is great. That is good. And I think that should always continue. Amen. It happens in this house and it will always happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you following me? It is anointed of God, apportioned by God, ordained by God, that the anointing of God will break yokes. It is always what God has desired. That's number one. That's the one dimension. The word for this word anointing also means to grow fat. Amen? F-A-T. To grow fat. To increase in size. That word anointing, there's a, the second meaning for that word. If you look at it in the Hebrew, it means to grow fat. To increase. Amen? Amen. So, it therefore means, if you read it in that context, it says that the yoke shall be destroyed because you have grown fat. Amen. Amen. It means that a time will come in your life that certain yokes will not go until you grow. Certain yokes will not be broken until you grow. It is in the increase and the fatness of your neck that the yoke is broken from your neck. Amen. Amen. That means that certain yokes will not fit on your neck anymore because you have grown fatter than the size of the yoke. What that simply means is this. God has ordained a system in his kingdom that ensures that everybody who focuses on growth can get to a point in their lives that some things will not touch you anymore. Some sickness will not have permission to knock on your door. Because you have grown to a point where you address them from afar. And even if they touch your body, you can speak to them and they hear your voice. Amen. You've grown into it. Amen. Now, don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. The devil can attack in different ways. And I've seen him in even people who you think he will never touch. He can go and attack anybody. Are you following me? But it takes the revelation that we have in God to enable us to deal with that attack that has come. Are you following me? And that's where the growth comes into place. Amen. Amen. There are some burdens that cannot be on your neck anymore. There are some things that cannot be on your shoulder anymore. 
because you have grown bigger than that yoke upon your life. A yoke is something that holds you down and puts you in a particular kind of service and lifestyle. If you see an ox, a cow that has a yoke on his neck, that cow does not have permission to do any other thing apart from what that yoke has been put on his neck to do. Are you getting this? That animal follows the direction and the pattern of the one who put the yoke on the neck. The speed of that animal depends on that person. The advancement of that animal depends on that person. The person can decide that that animal goes in circles all its life because of that yoke. It will continue to happen. Amen. amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. amen. And when you kept, come to a point in your life where you understand that this yoke is not meant to be my, on my neck. Are you still with me? Yeah. This thing should not follow me everywhere I go. So you grow in knowledge and you acquire the knowledge that says, this should not be on my neck. Immediately that knowledge comes into you and it becomes a reality. You start to break it from up your neck. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. It's the same thing with finances. It's the same thing with every dimension and every area of your life. Day spring, are you still with me? Are you getting this? As you grow, you break it. That's the second dimension. And the third dimension is the dimension of oil. Oil signifies the workings of the Holy Spirit in your life on a daily basis. Amen? Hot not the oil. It signifies the workings of the Holy Spirit. But it's the second one I'm interested in. Number two, you're growing so you can break the yoke from your neck. In this year, from July all the way to December, I want you to intentionally focus on growth in your spiritual life. Grow into certain knowledge. Grow into certain, you know, understanding regarding situations and circumstances. That was why when in Proverbs, the writer wrote, he says, in all you're getting, get understanding. Because if you don't have understanding, you cannot break what is holding you down. Yes. And for you to gain understanding, you need to grow into understanding. Praise God, amen. Yeah, yeah. You need to grow into it. In all you're getting, get prayer, yes. Get signs and wonders, yes. Get all those beautiful things. But in all this getting, do what? Get understanding. Because understanding will help you keep your miracle. Not just gain your miracle. Praise God, amen. Yes. Are you all still with me? Yes. If we are going to go bigger, we need to do what? Grow bigger. Growth takes time. Growth takes effort. Growth takes work. Growth takes intention. Growth takes focus. Is everybody still with me? Yes. Let this sink into your spirit, people of God. To go bigger, we do what? Grow bigger. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me show you something. Second Timothy, Second Peter, sorry. Chapter 1, please. Second Peter. Second Peter is in the Old Testament, isn't it? No, good people of God. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure you're listening. Second Peter, chapter 1, New Testament, amen. amen. If you're there, say I'm there. If you're not there, say wait for me. Are you all there? Go to verse 5. Does Aya have it up? Verse 5. Let's read. One to go. No, let's start again. One to go. And beside this, give all your faith, virtue, and virtue, knowledge. Wait, hold on there. Can you go to verse 4, please? Let's read this one together so we put this next verse in context. Because sometimes we read some verses and we take it out of context. Let's put it in context. One to go. Whereby, Whereby are given unto us what? That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through love. Pause, pause. Let's read this one. Reading one. Just be very patient and read it. Are you all here? This ring? This is Bible study now. Hallelujah. He says, whereby are given to us what? Exceeding great and what? Precious promises. Who gave us great and precious promises? God. God gave you and gave me what? Great and precious promises. Why did he give us great and precious promises? That by these. So, so that by these means by these great and precious promises. 
Yeah? What happens to us? You might be partakers of the divine nature. So the divine nature is connected to the promises given. Hello? And by those promises, you become a partaker of the divine nature. So if you don't understand the promises, you cannot live in the divine nature. Hello? Amen? Okay? So the divine promises are given so that the divine nature can be gained. So watch this. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Verse 5. Against that backdrop, against that background. Verse 5. And beside this, another translation says, in addition to this. One translation says, by this reason, because of this, because you have the divine nature, because God wants to do great things in your life, because God is calling you to mighty things, because the divine nature must live through you and must be processed, you know, professed through you. Are you getting this? What should you do? Giving all diligence. Add to your faith virtue. And to virtue, knowledge. Keep going, Ayo. And to knowledge, read loud. And to temperance, and to patience, keep going, boy. And to godliness, and to brotherly kindness, keep going, boy. For if these things be in you and are bound, they make you that you shall never be what? No. Where? Can you see knowledge there again? Now, let's process it one by one. The first thing you do is to add. How many of you were taught addition in school? Amen. Even if you were not taught addition, you add every month. Rent plus. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. Outgoings and equal to balance, isn't it? Praise God. They've made us accountants by force. Amen. Everybody's an accountant. Amen. Now, watch this. Watch this. He says add. So, it, it therefore means that there's a process in every life where we must patiently, judiciously, with focus, add to our lives. If you are not adding, you are not fulfilling divine nature. It is impossible for the divine nature to be manifest unless you take time to add diligently to your life what the divine nature has imputed into you. You getting this? We are adding, so we are becoming. Praise God, amen. So he says here, if these things be in you and are bound, you go home and take time to read the things that say they should be in you. I'm just focused on the principle of adding today. Because it's your growing that will break the yoke. Are you getting this? If you're adding these things to your life, the yoke cannot stay on your life anymore. If you're adding knowledge to your life, there are some things you will just wake up one morning and say, I'm not going to live this life again forever. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. A dog does not go back to its vomit. Is that not what they said? The scripture says. Sometimes you need to wake up and add certain things to your life. Some of us need to add obedience. We need to add listening. We need to add sensitivity to the spirit. Amen. Amen. Add. It is in the addition that yokes are broken. Come on, say I hear. Praise God. Amen. He says, if you keep doing this, you will not be barren. You will not be unfruitful. So, barrenness is a function of not adding to your life. Are you listening to me? Yes. You are not productive. Not because God has not ordained you to be productive, but because you've not learned to add the right things into your life. Amen. Amen. Are you all still with me? Yes. Praise God. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. He says, if these things be in you and do what are bound, they continue. You don't let them go. You keep adding. You'll be... Barrenness will disappear. Unfruitfulness will do what? Disappear. So growth is important to break yokes. Growth is important to remove barrenness. Now, to grow in the word does not just mean to quote scriptures. To grow in the word means to live by scriptures. Amen. I remember walking around the house, 15, 16 years old, amen. Quoting scriptures, but not doing what my parents asked me to do, amen. <laughs> and my dad called me one of those days. He says, you can quote scripture all your life, but if you're not in obedience, scriptures are not going to work. I've never forgotten it till today. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He, I, had the, I had a Dick's Bible. He gave me a Dick's Bible on my 16th birthdays. Amen. So I was quoting this thing everywhere. I can, I will, 
Amen. If you talk of sword drill and you know go to this scripture and all of those, if you remember these things those days, I was always first, always scripture union, no but area, zone, region. I confess, praise God. Amen. Amen. But quoting scriptures does not mean doing scriptures. <laughs> Praise God. I'm just, reading. I'm just reading it and absorbing it. I'm excited. I'm marking it. If you see my days, colorful, different purple, yellow, everything. Beautiful, lovely Bible. Amen. But the colors I painted in the paper were not reflecting in the colors of my life because there was no obedience to the word. I was still growing, amen. 16, still growing, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Doing is what brings growing. What did I say? Doing. Is what brings what? Growing. growing. Doing brings growing. Amen. The more you're obedient, the more God can walk with you. The more you're obedient, the more God can use you. The more you're obedient, the more God can point to you. Praise God, amen. I remember one night. My wife was pregnant with Ayo, and she went to London to stay with her parents for a few, a few days, a few weeks. And I remember waking up in the night, about 8 p.m., 9 p.m., and the Lord said to me, get up, take your car, go and fill the tank. We were driving a Pojo 406 then, amen? White. <laughs> to go. Some of you don't even know a Pojo 406. How many of you don't know a Pojo 406? I don't, yeah, I don't you don't, 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 you didn't like it. <laughs> I had a Pojo 406 then. I remember buying it from a man who used to work in boots. You remember, love? Went to Preston. Bought that car, 1,000 pounds. Amen. The Lord said to me, get up, fill your tank. I was wondering, is there's no need for me to do that? Amen. I'm not going anywhere, but the impression was on me. Get up, go, fill your tank. I lay down to sleep. I was alone. Again, the Lord tapped me, get up, go, fill your tank. So I got up, dressed up, went to the petrol station, filled the tank, came back home, went to bed. 5.30 a.m., my father-in-law called me, called me and said, is, no, I think it was my mother-in-law, one of them called me and said, we don't mean to stress you, but there's a situation here with your wife, we need you to come immediately. Wow. There was no petrol station open at that time. Wow. Are you following me? Wow. I jumped into the car and drove all the way from Birmingham to London. Amen. I don't know how I got to London. Hallelujah. Because I was, I was not myself. Amen. First baby and all of that. Are you getting this? But I got there, rushed there. She was taken to the hospital. She was fine. What they thought was, you know, wrong. God turned it around for good. Amen. But that simple obedience, it turned my mindset to something else. The, the smallest things with God are more important than what you think is big. Are you listening to me? And it is that little obedience that God sees and says, I can commit more to your hands. Mm. Now, you grow in obedience by obeying. <laughs> do you hear me? Yes. The more you do something, the more you grow in that thing. Does somebody understand that? Did you hear me? The more you do something, the more you grow. Israel, the more he plays this keyboard, the more he learns it, isn't it? People of God, hear me. Anointing is not just power to break you over your life. Anointing is growing fat. It's growing fat. Increasing in your knowledge that does not permit yokes to rest on your neck. Someone say, I hear you. This spring, are you still with me? Hallelujah. So this year, for the rest of this year, commit yourself to growing. Look at that area of your life where you need to grow. If there's a gap, there's something we call in business gap analysis, amen? Yeah. Gap analysis means to define for yourself the distance between where you are and where you want to get to. There's a gap. Between here and there, what do I need to do to get there? And then you design, you design interventions to make sure that that gap is closed. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I want God to use me in many platforms and in many places to do his will and to bring his purpose to come to pass. Between now and then, there's a gap. You need to do some work to grow, to close that gap. Are you still with me? I want my family to be in a certain place, doing a certain thing at a certain time. I want my children to look like this, be like this, and act like this. 
between that place and now there's a gap growth will help you close that gap not just miracles but growth as well did you hear me not just signs and wonders but growth i'm not saying signs and wonders will happen they will happen but as you are growing you start seeing more signs and more wonders as you are growing with god amen, amen. hallelujah amen. when moses parted the red sea all he had to do was stretch his hand do you remember this when the time came for jordan to part there was no stretching of hand the bible says the priests they carried the ark of the covenant and they stepped into the water if you are still waiting for the old pattern you have not grown amen, amen. growth means to listen to god every single time to hear what he has to say and do it accordingly are you still here this spring? Yes. so this is the principle add add to your life every day Ensure you are growing every day. Let the word be in you every day. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night. So that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. And thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And you will have what? Good success. Joshua chapter 1 say. Good success. Prosperity. It does not come by claiming. It comes by growing. Praise God, amen. <laughs> amen. You can claim it for years until you grow it, you cannot enjoy it. Praise God. I lived with my grandmother for some years in my life, amen. And Mama grew every almost everything we ate in the house. Amen. At the back of the house. You cannot tell her that this, the market has shut down. And then she cannot cook for her family. Amen. You say, Mama, the market is closed. You say, Oh, I don't no problem. Go to the back. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. There's okra. That was where I knew how to pluck okra. Amen. And she talked to me, she said, No matter how tall the okra grows, the owner will still be able to bend it and pluck it. She was talking about me, amen. I was the okra, amen. <laughs> In that analogy. Praise God. And she was the owner of the okra, amen. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Everything she needed, she had in that back garden. See, if you are a visitor, you come from far, and she wants chicken, she doesn't want, she doesn't need to waste her time. All she does is go to the back. <whistles> all of them start running. They all the chicken from the whole world. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Running, flying. You see chicken flying above each other. To be killed, to the slaughter. <laughs> and, and my grandmother would just stand there. She would say, Nabe, that's my other name, amen. That's the one I want. Amen. And then we'll lay trap for that one. We'll keep giving it corn. And it'll be following you. And we lure it into the room. And then we shut the door. The end of the story is you cracking bones. Praise God. Thank God for the life of that chicken. <laughs> Praise God. The Lord has used it for what he called it to be. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Are you still with me? Yes. That's what his destiny. Yes. But she did not have to go far. See, if you grow it, you don't need to go anywhere else for it. I don't know if you understand me. Yeah. If you grow your own anointing, you don't need to wait for anybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, are you getting me? Hey, shadow, sir. You don't need to wait for anybody. You've grown into it. Now you know it for yourself. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. This thing is already bubbling inside of you. You have grown into it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And sometimes growing, I might have said this in church before, it takes groaning. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Sometimes growing takes groaning. See, you are studying the word but you are spending time in prayer, groaning in prayer until you see what is written becomes what is living inside of you. Amen. Amen. If you are going to go bigger, the challenge this year is to grow bigger. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And the yoke shall be taken and destroyed because you have grown fatter. So you need to write it down. I'm too fat for this yoke. Hey. Hallelujah. 
I'm too big for this yoke. My neck is too fat for this one. Hallelujah. Oh, yande bresa kete yadamaha. Ibreke zuri yande palu za degadaya. Le krondo pedi azata. Le mbrando kapuza ya tegede. You see certain things happening in your life. Happening in your home. Happening in your finances. Happening in your Christian life. Happening there's, there's things not in order. No, 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 no. I've seen it in the world. I'm too fat for this one. This one cannot stay. This one cannot rest on me. Because every time the demons are going, they are looking for who to put a yoke on me on their neck. There are some generational yokes that are they are top Ali Sunday yet. The devil has some generational yokes. He has put on families, and now he wants to pass it on from one family, one generation to another. When he comes to your turn, hey, shut up, Turn around and say, I'm too fat for this yoke. I know too much to be in that bondage. I've grown too much to be stuck in that place. I've known too much of God to let that thing rest on my neck. I've grown too much to let that chain hold me down. I've known God too much to let that thing continue in my life. I'm too fat for this yoke. And you know the devil likes to walk in cycles. The Bible says in Luke chapter 4 at the end when Jesus had overcome the devil and he has won the victory the Bible says he left him for what? A little while. Another translation says he left him for a season. A little while. A season. Alright, you think you've won the victory now? I'll leave you for a little while. Give your testimony. Go and give your testimony in church. Don't worry. Go, 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 go. Give your testimony. I'll come back later. So you go and give the testimony. You thank God. He's there a little while. Sometimes in that little while we get too comfortable. We stop growing. We stop groaning. We think now we've reached that level where nothing can touch us and where nothing can happen. We stop groaning and we stop growing. They say pray. You're not praying too much anymore. Because the last time you prayed heavily was to get that job that was going to give you something great. Now you have it. You think you don't need to pray anymore. You think you don't need to fast anymore. You think it's okay. I've arrived and where I am. <laughs> and now the devil is waiting for a little while. Then he comes again in the garden of Gethsemane. Are you listening to me? He comes with force and with strength and with power in the garden of Gethsemane. But he meets a Jesus that has been growing. He meets a Jesus that a great while before day will go out and will pray. Uh, the Bible says a great while before day. Day starts at 6 a.m. A great while before day for me will be like 4 a.m., 3 a.m. Jesus will go out and he will find a place in the mountain and just talk to his father. And the father will give him the agenda for the day. And said, today you will meet this person, that person, that person. Pray and you will overcome. Are you listening to me, people of God? He met a Jesus that has known his father. A Jesus that will not do anything unless his father tells him to do it. So when he came into the garden of Gethsemane, he did not meet Jesus praying and giving up and everything is going. He said, nevertheless, I may feel this way, but because I've grown too much, I cannot lose my portion and lose my purpose because of this pressure on my neck. If the shift comes to shore, nevertheless, not my will, your will be done. That's the greatest level of submission. She can't only add her. Are you still with me? You left him for a while. You need to know that the devil lives for a while. Just a while. He's coming back looking for another way, a stronger way. Jesus told us, mommy, that when a demon is cast out of somebody, they go to the arid places, the dry lands, looking for a place. Now, if they don't find anywhere to settle there, what do they do? They come back intelligent. See, these are not, they are not, you know, just, you know, it's not the way they show them on film in films. It's, it's not jockey and all those that nonsense. Are you testing me? These are intelligent beings. They come back to where they were. And if they see the house clean and prepared, they go and bring more and take over. And you listen, so that the end state is worse than the first state. So the desire of the enemy is to make you worse than you've ever been before. Are you getting this? 
So when you cast out a devil, don't leave the house arranged and empty. When you cast out a devil, occupy it with the word. Grow something inside of it. Hey, are you listening to me? Yes, that demon of poverty is out, yes. But grow the word of increase and prosperity inside of you. You may be thinking you, you traveled. Good. You left us that place. Now you've come to this place. Well done. 100% well done. I will leave you for a while. And I'll come back again. So he's waiting. You get the first job, he's waiting. Are you listening to me? Yeah. You get the second one, he's waiting. When you now think everything is working and settled, he comes knocking. And sometimes he will come with things as small as pride. Are you listening? Very small. Pride. Tell them you can't go because you're too busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you there with me? Yeah. Tell, 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 don't, don't, don't give that offering. Don't give it. You need it more than they need it. Don't give that person. Don't give them. Don't, don't answer that call. Are you listening to me? Yeah. You and that person, you're no longer on the same level. And then you tell yourself, I'm not, I may, I cannot talk to that person because I'm now spiritually above. Are you listening to me? Yeah. They say, can you call so and so person? No, I can't. Why am I the one calling them? Pastor, why can't you do it? Is somebody still with me? Yes, and then that pride starts to enter. And what happens is this. The Bible says pride goes to what? Pride. So when you see pride, what's coming behind? Oh. It's a principle. Amen. <laughs> it's what? It's a principle. If you see pride, there's going to be a fall. Are you still here with me? Yes, sir. And so what we should do is that we must learn to keep doing what? Growing. No matter what our victories are. No matter your victories, no matter your failures, keep growing. I'm going to say it again. No matter your victories, no matter your failures, do what? Keep growing. Keep growing. Keep growing. Eat the word like you've not eaten it before. Stay in prayer like you've not prayed before. Do what God wants you to do like you've not done it before. Why? It is in your growth that you are ready for the next warfare that's coming. So growing is freedom. Amen. Growing is deliverance. Growing is progression. Growing ensures that your neck is too fat for that yoke. Amen. Amen. This month, July, to the end of the year, what are the two words? Bigger and what? Stronger. And then it says, strengthen thy, 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 thy sticks. I will, call, I will talk about strengthening thy sticks next Sunday. Amen. Amen. But today I want you to know that it's time for your neck to get too fat for some things the devil wants to place on it. Are you still here with me? Yes, 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 yes. Yes. It's time that we, 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 we look at some things as past tense. Amen. Amen. I used to. Not I still. I used to. That thing used to hold me. But now it no longer has a hold on me. I've grown into victory. Shut up. I used to get fearful anytime I'm doing this. But thanks be to God. Fear has gone. Because I encountered one scripture that says God has not given me a spirit of fear. But a spirit of what? Power and of love and of a sound mind. And because of that, I'm no longer afraid of that thing. Is somebody getting this? Hallelujah. Grow into victory. Grow into power. Grow into more anointing. Grow into more grace. Grow into more revelation. Hallelujah. Amen. In your career, grow. Amen. Amen. In your job, grow. In your calling, grow. In your walk with God, grow. In your marriage, grow. Do you know there are some marriages that keep, they need, you, marriages need to keep growing. Glory to God. Is there an amen in the house? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Add to your knowledge. When you get that knowledge and you get virtue, don't stop. Add temperance. Amen. When you get to temperance, don't stop. Add patience. Amen. When you get to patience, don't stop. Add something else. Godliness. Amen. Add self-control. 
Now you have self-control. You have this thing, uh, you know, uh, all these beautiful things. He says, add brotherly kindness. Now you add that brotherly kindness. He says, don't stop there. Add charity. Add love. Amen. <laughs> add it. Add it. Amen. If all these things are in you and they are bound, you will never be barren. You will never be unfruitful. What a word. What a word. What a word. Let's not just skip over it. Amen. You will never be barren. So, the secret of breaking the yoke of barrenness is adding to your life all that is needed. Praise God. Praise God. A few things we've been through, amen. But one of the things we've always hung upon is the Word of God. You know, I've said, shared this in church before. When they talked about children, not having children, they're telling us that we cannot have and all those things, amen? We have to add, and to add, and to add, amen? Praise God. And we're praying one of those days, and she dreamt, amen? And she, in this dream, she saw the counselor of the exchequer standing in front of our house. That was Gordon Brown at the time, isn't it? He was standing in front of the house where we were living, that time on College Road, 677 College Road, praise God. And then he had with him, in his hand, two loaves of bread. That was the dream she saw. Two loaves of bread. Ah, we said this is something to add. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we need to pray into this. And immediately understanding came. Two, key, two children are coming. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. When they say we could not have, two children are coming. And we began to pray into it. And the two of them are here now. Amen. Amen. And two of them are getting bigger than us. Amen. Amen. But we thank God. When they were invisible, we saw them. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. And for both of them, by God's grace, we named them. She named them. So before you see it, name it. Amen. Name it. Give it a name. So that when it comes, you know this is the one I was waiting for. Yes. Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give me grace to grow, Lord. Amen. Give me grace to grow. Amen. Give me hunger to grow. Amen. Let me love you and grow. Give me a passion to grow. Help me, ancient of days. Help me, help me. There must be no yoke on my neck. Nothing holding me down. Nothing stopping me. I want to break every yoke. Every yoke, every yoke. It may be poverty. It may be spiritual poverty. Natural poverty. Whatever it is. Ratoke paluta yadaka. Zebrondo shatikaye. Librando ke safala yadiha. Give me grace, Lord. I want to grow. I want to grow. I want to grow. I want to know more, learn more. With all diligence, add, 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 add. Grow fat. Pray for yourself now. And say, Lord, give me grace to grow. Give me grace. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. Let more be added to my life. In the mighty name of Jesus.